Hi friends, what's on my mind today in Ajijic, Jalisco, Mexico, on the shores of Lake Chapala, just south of Guadalajara. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Well, the weather's changing. Uh, it's about 90 degrees today, and um, I've been a little warm. So I'm having a corona, <laughs> kind of appropriate for the times. Actually, I don't drink alcohol. It's Corona Cero, no alcohol. I do like beer, but if I drink alcohol, it gives me a headache. You know, I was feeling kind of bad for myself the other day. And it was when I was, I was actually mopping the floor and thinking, well, how come uh, I had to pay the maid in advance and tell her to stay home for a month? And then I just started being angry with myself for feeling bad for myself. That's just so, so stupid. There are so many things going on in the world with so many people that are having such problems. I mean, not, not counting the fact that people are getting sick and dying. I mean, leave that out of it, there are still so many problems going on in the world. And I was angry with myself because I am so lucky. I'm here in a wonderful place that's warm and I'm not ill, and I'm not having a financial problem, and I'm not dependent upon a weekly paycheck. And it's really just kind of got me depressed thinking about all of those people who are going to have a financial problem. I'm not talking about this week's groceries. I got friends and relatives who are going to have problems in the future if this thing goes on for very long. And how do I know this? Because I've been there and done it. You know, there are so many people in the United States who live beyond their means, and they're able to do that because of credit cards. I've never actually been in a situation where I lived from weekly paycheck to weekly paycheck. But I've definitely been in a situation where I've gone from monthly income to monthly income and had to juggle things to get all of the bills paid and to pay off the credit cards and keep them current. And I know what's going on now is people are going to Walmart. You gotta have food, you gotta eat. And they didn't get a paycheck this week and they're gonna use their credit cards. There's a pretty simple rule that if you have to live beyond your means with credit cards, that it doesn't take too long before making the payments on the credit cards is going to be beyond your means. I can see down the road a few months. Maybe you've got good credit. Maybe you've got great credit. Maybe you've got high limits on your cards and uh, you're okay for the moment. But the minute you miss a payment on one of those credit cards, the interest rates are going to go up from manageable to unreasonable in the 20 to 25 percent range. And how do I know this? Because I've been there and I've done it. And the only way you can get out of it is not by getting a weekly or a monthly paycheck back. If you're living beyond your means with a credit card and so many millions and millions of people who don't have have their jobs right now are going to have to do this. And down the road, they're not going to be able to make the payments because you can't catch up with credit card payments that you've used in lieu of having enough weekly income. The only way I was able to do it was to sell large assets I had acquired and pay things off that I had carried for years. 
And I was in that situation um, before I moved to Mexico. I, I, uh, I did a lot of downsizing. <laughs> it doesn't look like it if I live in a 3,700 square foot house in Mexico, but I did a lot of downsizing and moved into, into an RV at that time. And that was back in 2000, 2001. And I sold off some assets and I got rid of all of my debt. And if it weren't for that and remaining debt free all of these nearly 20 years, I would be having the same problem that I know millions and millions of the people in the world are having now. And the problem is going to get worse down the road when it comes time to pay the popper. The piper? How does that saying go? Well, anyway. Um, I wish I could be your uh, guy who makes a video and solves that problem for you, but I'm not. Um, like I said, I got out of that circle of living beyond my means and not being able to, in the end, keep up with paying the debt service to having lived beyond my means without selling large assets, and I was fortunate enough to have accumulated some large assets that I could pay. One of them was my principal residence. Um, I sold a principal residence and used uh, part of the money after paying off, oh, credit cards, balances, thousands of dollars worth. Um, the dentist, the dentist carried me for years through thousands of dollars for kids' braces and you know, he didn't do it entirely out of the goodness of his heart. He was charging me 12% interest on the balance. But when I sold out my principal residence after having lost my income, um, I paid him off. And it was, I, I remember, it was like $11,000 that had accumulated over the course of many years of going to the dentist and not being able to pay the bill. Anyway, I paid those things off, and then I used part of the money to buy another house down the street that was in disrepair, and I fixed it up and sold that and made a little bit more money. And that uh, helped me pay off the rest of my debt service that I had carried for many years. And a lot of it was consumer debt, but I was also in some businesses that failed, and so it was business debt as well. Anyway, debt-free, that was my... Uh, goal and it was my accomplishment and it's my blessing today but believe me I know how hard it is to get to that point and I'm I'm feeling so bad I do have one suggestion for you and I'm not a financial advisor I'm not a financial wizard and don't ever take financial advice from me uh, if you have money to invest <laughs> but Something my dad told me, who lived through the Great Depression, was that people who had great equity in their houses lost them when they couldn't make the mortgage payment. But those people that had high loan balances and small equities in their house were never foreclosed upon because the banks didn't want them. So here's my one simple piece of advice for you today. If you have an equity credit line on your principal residence or any other investment rental property, anything that has a mortgage on it, borrow as much as you can against an equity line of credit. And if you don't have an equity line of credit, try to get one so that your equity in the property is very little. The bank will never foreclose. They only foreclose on properties where the owner has equity. They don't want to foreclose on something that you only have 10% equity and a 90% loan on. That's what my dad told me from having observed things in the Great Depression. And maybe the time has come for me to have dug that little piece of information filed away many, many years ago in the back of my mind. Um, I don't have any mortgages. Um, whatever I own here is free and clear, and some rental property that I have is also free and clear. So it's not uh, advice that I'm going to put my money where my mouth is because I no longer need to. I'm debt-free. But 
like I said, I feel bad, and I don't know what to tell you to do about it. That's what's on my mind today. You know, I started this conversation by saying I started to feel bad for myself because I was mopping the floor, and it occurred to me, I am the maid. <laughs> Have a good day. If you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.